Hey there! Welcome to lesson number five. So we're more than halfway through. That means this eight, series of eight lessons that I'm going to record here. Um, and in the last lesson, we started to learn, saw her standing there just with the down up strum. Today, we're going to do it with that new strum that I taught you. Um, and but don't worry, we'll practice a little bit first. Make sure your guitar is in tune, as usual, um, before you start. I tuned mine just before this. And um, the other thing is that um, we're going to learn a couple of new chords today. Don't worry. Um, again, it's one of those things you just have to slow down and take this uh, at whatever speed works for you. Don't worry if it's too fast. You know, just go through it again and again. Take your time. And uh, that'll be a lot better. So let's um, take out Saw Her Standing There. So you remember this from last time. Um, if you printed it out, that's great. If you have to put it on your screen, that's okay too. For any of you who don't know, you can get this song at my website. The link is posted below and you can download it and print it out or whatever you need to do. Um, last time when we played through, we just went straight through right to the end. This time we're going to do that little repeat that's here. So that means we come all the way down to where it says that. Then we come back to the bridge, go all the way through to the end again. So that's what we're going to do. But this time with the new strum, first we're going to just do a little warm up with that strum. So this was the, the strum. One, two, and three three and four and if I count it out you can also print that out and get that at my uh, website so let's take D and G and practice doing that transition we're going to do D four times and then we're going to do G four times so before we do the switch the strum pattern was one Okay, so if you need to, just stop the recording and practice doing that strum a few times first. Um, other than that, let's move on. We're going to do four of those strum patterns for D and four for G. Just going that way. Okay, so I'll count us in. Here we go. One, two, and three, and four, and one. need to again just stop and do that back and forth a few times before we carry on here we're also going to do um, D to A a few times so let's try the same thing with D to A four times for D four times for A here we go two and three and four and one to A, one, two, and 
So now we've kind of warmed up a little bit with the chords. Um, I'm actually going to do this song with my flat pick. So I have a pick here. Um, I will talk about that at another time, but I'm just going to do that so I'm nice and loud so you can hear me loudly when we play the song. And uh, it's good, I need to be louder than you. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to play the song. So get your sheet out or on the screen or whatever you need to do. I'm going to count us in. We're going to do it about at the same tempo, so nice and slow for the time being. Here we go. Well, she was just
G right here. Sometimes it's a little tricky at first. Some of you may be trying to sing along with this and having troubles. Other you, others are having no trouble at all singing. If you are struggling with singing, what I suggest you try to do, first of all, you know, play through it with me singing it for a few times, and then go back and try it on your own, but try humming. One of the reasons that singing gets people confused with playing sometimes, it gets them all messed up, is because uh, singing is also kind of rhythmic. And so the rhythm, or it's what's called the meter of the words, the lyrics, tend to interfere with the rhythm of your strumming. So when you're trying to hear both of those things at the same time, it can mess up your strumming. So that's why humming, which is not rhythmic, which is less rhythmic, uh, is one step towards that. And it helps you to get used to hearing your voice with the guitar, hearing two things at the same time. So again, be, pa be patient with yourself and just hum it. And maybe it's only a few places you can hum it. And, you know, maybe it's one line. That's a step in the right direction. Just keep working at it. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to learn a new chord. And this is the C chord. Uh, lots of guitar teachers teach this one first. I don't because I find it's a little bit of a struggle. Uh-oh. <laughs> there are some chords that are just a little trickier to learn than others. So C, we're going to look at this one here. C um, uses three fingers, but they're all spread out over the strings, not like your other chords. Well, G, I guess, is a little bit like that, but... Uh, C is um, a bit more of a stretch for a lot of people for their fingers. So I'm going to make a C for you and uh, show you what it's like here. So your first finger is on the second string, first fret. Your second finger is now on the fourth string, second fret. And your third finger is on the fifth string, in the third fret. Now a lot of people have trouble stretching between getting these two to sit uh, right 
and uh, that's probably what you're going to face more than anything else. When you strum a C, you try just to avoid the top fat E string, so now we're strumming from the fifth string down. So try that out, and you're probably get, getting lots of buzzy, dead, or whatever strings to begin with with C. I always say crap begins with C. <laughs> Uh, this is why I don't teach C first. I find it's more of a struggle uh, than D or A. So try that a few times. We're going to uh, try strumming it just our usual down, up, and down, up, and down. And you're saying, oh, yours sounds so much better than mine. Well, I've been playing since 1969. I should be better. Just try it a few times. Big stretch, isn't it? If you're not used to it. The thing is that G and C are often found in the same song because they are in the same key or family of chords. Um, and so the song that we're going to work on next time will have G and C in it, and another chord, but I'll show you that in a minute. That's not so hard. Um, so what we're going to work on right now is moving from G to C. And that's a big, big change. Again, just try that with your left hand a few times. Go to G, and then go to C. G, then to C. back and forth and back and forth as much as you can now we're going to start strumming it but again if you need to stop and just practice moving these hands this hand first okay so we're actually going to do that strum pattern that we were just doing with G and C but you can also do it, obviously, with the, just the down-up strum. The reason is I want to get that strum pattern in your ears so you hear it more and more and get used to it and don't have to think about it as much. So that's why we're going to use that one. So we're going to start with G, and we're going to strum that strum pattern four times for G, and then go to C four times. Okay, so go back to G. And I'm going to count us in, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, two, three, and four. Good, now we switch to C. That's something that you can work on uh, in the next little while. But I'm also going to show you one more chord, and the reason is because, like I said, the next song has this chord in it. Now this one you might like. This is called an E minor. So it's only two fingers. Yeah, we can do that. This is nothing. All right. So if you're coming from a G, which we will be doing in this song, G 
your first finger is already there. It's already where it's supposed to be. So your first finger is on the fifth string in the second fret, and then your second finger is right underneath that. So just two fingers. And this is called an E minor. The little M there means minor. Okay, so you can write that one down too. Now you've got, wow, like five chords. That's pretty good. Now if you strum an E minor, you'll notice something about it right away. It's got a whole different sound to it. Minor chords tend to have a sad sound, whereas major chords have a happy sound. Totally different. So the last thing we're going to do today is go from G to E minor. So if you keep that one finger in place when you're switching and just move your second finger underneath, that's all you have to do. So we'll just do that quickly and then we'll end for today. G to E minor. Here we go. Two and three and four and one. We're going to do four of them. So when you're practicing those chords, those transitions, you can narrow it down to just two strum patterns and even just one strum pattern if you're getting okay at switching. This is a good way to work up to doing that. Um, so the song that we're going to work on next is called Teach Your Children. It's an old Crosby, Stills and Nash song. Uh, and it is available on my website, which you can find the link to below. So you can download it and look at it. Try it out if you like. It's two pages, so you'll have to uh, find a way to see it on your screen if you're not printing it out. Um, so I will meet you next time, and we will work on that. See you later. Mm -hmm.